<laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, raise your hands if you're like me and you went to a school where you had to go to school. <laughs> Great, okay, cool. Um, so I'll raise your hands if you're like me and you went to a school where they had a curriculum that you had to learn. Okay, looks like everyone. Um, raise your hands if you had things that you were interested in outside of school that you didn't have time to learn because you were busy with their curriculum. Great, me too. And then finally, raise your hands if you would have studied that stuff, if you did have the time to do it on your own and done it. Great, great, thank you. So I'm a Florida boy, and this is my beach, and it is the most beautiful beach in the world, in my opinion. I started my journey in environmental education here uh, because I believed that if every child had the opportunity to connect to the life of the planet we share in a powerful experience in a beautiful natural area, then that would give the value of a cultural transformation to humanity so that we'd be able to, 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 to change the way we relate to the planet so instead of being consumptive and destructive, we would be generative and supportive. I learned in about two years of, of working in environmental and alternative education that it's just not possible for that to happen. Uh, it's just not, it just doesn't work because most kids in the world live in cities. And there aren't that many kinds of places like this left in the proximity to where the kids are. We don't have the infrastructure, and it just, it's just not possible. But um, every human being has this exact same beauty of life inside of them. So if we could educate, which means from Educar to draw forth from within, if we could connect everyone to the life inside of them, then we would have the same effect of a complete global shift in consciousness. Um, so it's like we take a seed, right? And you take a seed of a plant and you plant the seed of a plant, fertile soil, and you give it water and you give it sunlight and you give it time and space. The seed knows what to do. That's how you get a tree. And if you give it what it needs, it does the rest. And you get a big, beautiful, healthy tree and you get big, beautiful, healthy fruit. We're not any different. You take a human being and you give them the fertile environment, which is the culture that they're in, which is really just how we are together. And you give them what they need and you give them the space, you give them the time and you trust the life inside of them fundamentally. You'll see miracles. So this idea of trusting the life in human beings is not a new idea. Um, it's, it's been around for a while, and, and a model of education that incorporates this is not a new thing either. Maria Montessori, about 100 years ago, set up schools where kids could do all of the things that people were doing in the world at that time. Um, the thing is that after 100 years have passed, the opportunities of things to do in the world today are so mind-bogglingly different after an industrial revolution and well into a technological one. So how do we update that model? How do we trust people to express themselves in a really, really weird, beautiful, complex world? So fast forward some time, and I met a dude at a TEDx event in Brooklyn, New York, who is adapting tools and practices from the software development world to this kind of education so that the, the, same, the same ways that teams organize, teams of brilliant people come together, and then they figure out, like, how they want to do completely innovative work really quickly and really powerfully and effectively together. The same tools apply to kids that are just figuring out what do I want to do with my life today and what do I want to do with my life as a whole and how do we as a collective want to do things together. So I went and I started playing with art at the beginning of the first Agile Learning Center in New York City. And we started working with some of these tools. This is one of those tools. It is, oh, and I should mention, that when I started working there, it was the first time in my life that I found an environment where, where I felt like I could, I could facilitate self-directed education in a way that I had only dreamt of before then, because that's what I've been wanting to do. So we use these tools to facilitate it. This one, this one allows children to say, okay, this is what my intention is, and to articulate it, and then to track their progress, and assess how they're doing, and then think about 
their intentionality and grow in self-awareness. And it's also a really valuable tool as a facilitator because I get to see what, what are you interested in day after day? And then how can I support you to go as deeply into the learning related to your passions and your gifts as possible and not need me as soon as possible? Because that's really what we want for all our kids. And then we have these other tools that allow us to see how are we together as a group. So what, how, are, how are we together and what do we want to do? And then how do we want to be to do what we want? So right now, um, our group intention would be to inspire and inform, and the orientation would be as audience and presenter, right? So if we wanted to shift this dynamic because it wasn't serving our intention, if our intention was to share from a heart space, we'd make a giant circle, and then we would pass around a listening stick and everyone would take a turn for it. And then this other tool we use to create our culture as a whole. So what do we want to do as a collective? What values do we have? And if something's not working, how do we say, OK, this isn't working. Let's try doing this and then see how it goes. Instead of making big, hard rules and having a big, tough bureaucracy and having people in charge making all the rules, we all just figure out what do we want to do together and how do we do it fast and easy so that everyone spends more time doing what they want. Because all of the time that we're spending Every minute of every day is our life, and that's precious. So there's this one story that comes from one of these schools. I've got a lot of these stories, and it was really hard to pick, and I've been blessed to witness a number of miracles in the last four years of doing this work. Um, and this is a story of these three kids, and they went to the Museum of the Moving Image in New York City, and they got really excited about these video games that they saw there. And they, they got so excited that they wanted to make one. So then they did the programming, they did the graphics, they, they assembled the hardware, they built the cabinet, and then they unveiled their game at Microsoft's Indie Gaming Night event at their corporate offices in New York City, alongside a whole bunch of other professional game developers. And we're talking about a 7, 8, and a 14-year-old. So when the, when the people there, like the people attending the, the event would show up and they would, they would see this cabinet, they would ask the chaperones, like, what's happening here? And they would say, no, 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 they're the game designers and then they would talk to the kids. And it, what's really powerful about this isn't that they did that. It's not the product, it's the experience. Because those kids weren't pretending to be game designers. They were game designers. And that's really, really powerful to know that you can do what you want now. So I'm here as a representative of a collective. It's not my thing. There's a lot of us, and we're growing really quickly. The way that we organize as a network is the same way we organize as a community. Every person makes decisions for themselves, and then each group figures out what it wants to do for itself. So it's, it's, it's horizontal, and it's blurry, and it's beautiful, and it really looks a lot more like life, and it's a lot more fun and fulfilling. So I want to I wanna close with, with a completion to that, to that story from earlier, where, where one of those kids, I was walking him home one day, and this is one of those kids that lives in a city. And... We were walking through a park, and he took this moment, and he looked around him, and then he looked at me, and he said, you know, it's really generous, trees. They just, they're really contributive. They just, they just do what they do to make everything work. And it's just really generous. And that's my opinion. And in that moment, I got to see exactly what I've been working for, for all this time, and if a kid who lives in New York City and is interested in video games is harboring that kind of consciousness, then I don't really worry about the future. So thank you.